My name is Paul Spence and in 2012 I was attacked without provocation. I suffered a frontal lobe brain hemorrhage and contusions. That injury blew my life to pieces. I was told I had a two to three year recovery and at the end I wouldn't be the same. I'm here now in Ibiza running four marathons in four days. This is to show that you can bounce back, you can go on, you can have a great life, you can have great experiences and achieve anything the heart desires. So this is pretty much every day for me, you know, up at half past five and heading to the gym. Um, health and fitness has been instrumental in my recovery. I couldn't do as much as what I do now in early recovery because of fatigue levels. I went from three squats, three press ups and three sit ups and just built from there slowly and slowly, you know, and built and built and built and enjoyed every moment of it and it gave me um, positivity and it was proactive you know, in a very negative recovery. So it, for me, I, I believe mental health and fitness has saved my life. I really do. Okay, so this is Tom Cowan. When I was uh, mostly uh, very early recovery, about eight months, seven months in, I didn't have a real clue, you know. I know I wanted to go to the gym and I knew I needed to do something to keep myself out of depression, really, um, and build myself up. You know, I, I was mentally um, struggling, but I was physically able. So I wanted to use it as my strength. But when I came to the gym, I didn't really have a clue, you know, I was found myself just wandering around, trying to put routines together, I didn't have that thought to do it, you know, so I knew I needed guidance. Yeah, I think, um, I think with Paul, it was uh, building foundations with Paul. Um, you know, Paul hadn't really, uh, hadn't really exercised previous to that anyway, um, so his confidence was low. Obviously, with an injury and uh, to that extent, you know, Paul was, he was baby steps more than anything first. So we started to put some small routines together, you know, just did a few bodyweight exercises to start off with. Um, and then just gradually went into larger compound exercises as uh, Paul's confidence grown. I think the main thing was, was starting to make Paul believe, you know, he could do something again, you know. Uh, and obviously, as you can see now, he's, <laughs> His, uh, his, his recovery has been completely inspiring, so um, it just gives a lot of hope for um, a lot of people out there who obviously have brain injuries and, you know, obviously with, with Paul and his charity, Paul, um, you know, it's kind of set other people on the path a little bit more as well. So that was my training session, but believe it or not, you know, in early recovery, sort of three years ago, I was just reduced to the house, you know, I couldn't leave the house alone for the first four months of my recovery. Um, I was sort of lost, vacant, confused. I couldn't. I had vision trouble. I had tinnitus, and I couldn't look up properly. And so I went dizzy with labyrinthitis. I couldn't speak properly. You know, I, I was really reduced to sort of all my main senses was was uh, you know not working properly because of the brain damage. Um, so I was vulnerable and very weak. You know, what I used to do a lot was I just used to pace up and down in here in my kitchen, you know, just sort of pacing up and down. I used to rub my hands together a lot like that. Like this, this, you know, this, this motion constantly really. I mean, what I would do is I'd stop and I'd stare at the wall. I didn't even know I was doing it, but I would stare at, say, a wall for minutes at a time, up to five minutes. And then I'd just sort of carry on again like this. It's quite hard to think of nothing, you know, but that's generally what I did constantly. You know, it, and then one day, after about four months, I sort of come round and I, I, I actually came round and I was looking at the door and I thought that was strange. So I have not even realised that I was doing it. You know, and I still continued to do it after that, but I was more aware of it a little bit. You know, as time went on, I was getting more aware, more aware and more aware of what I was doing and what I was reduced to. It's been horrific as you can imagine. I mean, as a parent, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know how damaged he was when we first got the phone call that he was in some kind of incident uh, that Easter. And it went until the early hours of the morning when we did find out they'd actually had a bleed on the brain. So as a parent, the feeling through your body is just, it's horrific. You don't want to feel that so many times, I can tell you. And then <clears throat> when we went there and he was wired up 
and uh, you just sort of looked at him in disbelief that it was your son laid there. So you know, just looking back through uh, newspaper articles, um, right throughout my recovery, the first one being the appeal, which was looking for the guy that obviously did this to me, um, and the unprovoked assault. That was the whole day of the male, co male covering it there. Uh, you know, at that time I was just lost. I mean, I was out with friends, you know, and um, obviously, like it says, I was unprovoked at attacked for nothing, you know, and that punch had devastating implications on my life. Um, and it would change my life forever. You know, part of my identity was lost that day. Part of me, the man that I was, had died that day. And, um, and then I was left with trying to rebuild my life with a damaged brain. I lost my job, um, couldn't work obviously, I was driving license, lost my memories. I lost connections with people. I lost my way and lost my mind, you know, um, on such a deep level, you know. Literally, my life was blown to pieces. The, the, the brain that I had been brought up with for 32 years, a jigsaw puzzle of all different bits, you know, ambitions, likes, lows, this, that, and the other, was taken to pieces. As a son, first of all, he was my firstborn son. And, he, and he's, he's been everything you wanted a son to be, really. His personality, the way he conducts himself, the way he went into his job. And he won't, be, he won't too long into his job, he was a foreman. Uh, and it's just a mark of how, how he is. He's always out in town with his son, Reese and his daughter, Shannon. They're always out and about doing things together, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's much like, I, I mean, I was only 19 when Paul was born. And, uh, and and his brother Mark was only 15 months after that. So it's pretty much a similar thing with us. We've always gone out together and drank together. It's just because I'm a bit older now, they don't like me to cramp the style, I think. But, <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, I, think, I think we're really lucky in a lot of respects. These two gents looked after me. Amazing. Part of the amazing team on Ward 440. You know, the trauma to his brain that I did sustain was, was life threatening. Yes. And to see Paul like this, you know, it's unbelievable from to see his, you know, made his full, full recovery. Um, and the, the injury that I did sustain, massive bruising to the brain, damaging nerves and blood vessels, which um, in turn you know, threatened his life. Yeah. I was on the night. I remember you actually coming in your first day here yeah. um, on the unit, and you certainly will remember that because you were, you were in such a state at the time. But as Paul said, after such a severe um, traumatic brain injury, uh, the, the recovery that you've shown, not just yeah. now, you, you know, progressively, and he's still, they're still showing he's unbelievable. This he's is absolutely it. amazing. And I think it shows to everyone really that it can, you know, that yeah. can happen and you can get back to That's not just a normal life. I think yeah. you're now doing something extraordinary yeah, in, this is in, it. in you know, helping other people really. Yeah. This is a poster of the site, which is a, a, a recovery journey. You know, showing people that things can and do get better over time. That is, was amazing for me and to be supported and um, backed by the NHS. This is where I was damaged, my frontal lobe, where my um, contusions and hemorrhage was. It has got easier with my coping strategies, so it's important to use them. I didn't like doing them at, originally because it wasn't like the old me, but I had to accept that I was going to be different after this injury, which is really important in brain recovery, you know. It's been really difficult. It's been difficult in the sense that Paul has changed so much. At the beginning, we did want to wear, you know, the injury and what it would entail for him. And over the past three years, we've realised how much Paul has changed. He's completely different from what he was before to what he is now. In a sense that 
Whereas before, he wasn't interested in fitness and things like that. He liked to go out for a drink, whereas he doesn't like to drink anymore. Um, so it's, he has completely changed. You see lots of different things in Paul. It's like having two different people, really. He was a great character, liked a good laugh, really fun to be around. And not that it's not fun to be around now, but it's very focused on what he's doing. You know, he wants to help people. It's just very different. It's just a very different person. You know, I was thinking the other day to myself, I was running along, um, training for the Ibiza, and um, I was thinking about, you know, I wonder if what the old Paul would make of the new Paul. I sort of like, you know, had a little laugh to myself, really. I thought it's a funny question, isn't it, you know? Thinking that about yourself, but I think the old Paul would be proud of the new Paul, which, which was, is important, you know, and I was chuffed with that. And I sort of thought to myself, you know, in recovery, there's a long time where I was valuing myself less. I think you are in brain recovery because it's so long and you're not the same. You actually don't like, people don't like change and they don't like to be different. And one of the hardest things was that I couldn't see my son being born, you know, as a dad. It's bad enough I've been any sort of memories taken away, but you know, something like that. Something no one should have to, um, I've taken away from them. I went to hospital and they said to me at the time, um, we're not sure if you'll ever see that memory again. And also, um, it's one about my brother. I said, I can't see my, you know, see my, my childhood with my brother and stuff and my friends. And they said, we're not sure if you'll ever get their memories either. That was, uh, it was horrible, yeah, I mean, Heartbreaking. You know, he was always the one in charge of our relationship or our brothers. He was always the one in charge because he was the bigger brother. But after this happened, that's what I became the boss at work. He became come to work with me. He had, I had to pick him up, everything. He, he lost his way in, the, in that sense and I had to take over as the big brother. He's been a leader, not just with me, he was a leader of friendship groups, things like that. He's always been the one that's in charge. He's always been the one, the, the top one, who always says, yeah, let's do this, let's do this. Like, you know, the one that people look up to. But then that got took away from him and, you know, that was, I reckon that was one of the hardest things for him to take and if you actually spoke to him about it, he would find that hard. And yeah, so did I, obviously. I, I, he's my big brother, I'm not his. And he always has been my hero, but the way he's gone through this and everything that he's doing now is different to what it was, but he's my hero for a lot better reasons now. I can actually say he's a hero because of this, not just because he's my big brother. My relationship with Paul is now that we're friends. Um, we split amicably, amicably and, you know, I think we both had to do it um, because I think neither of us were very happy. So in order to make us both happy, we decided to split up, but we've still remained friends since then. We've gone on holiday with each other since and, um, you know, we do, we do get on really well. So, we'll see. Um, I would like to say to Paul that I'm really proud of you. Um, keep going. You're an amazing person and I'll always love you. On to going on later on in the year to August. I was really proud to be in Men's Health magazine. You can see me there. Um, I featured in a transformation article. I mean, to be in that UK magazine, it was a absolute dream, to be to be honest, you know, but it would show people that you can still achieve. You know, I was mentally struggling, even when I went for that photo shoot at Men's Health, I wasn't all there mentally. I was still lost and sort of trying to rebuild myself. 
But I was in Men's Health Studio, positive progress. I'd gone, you know, from literally being sat in this living room, not being able to leave my house, to getting into Men's Health 18 months later. I was going to say, when you were in the early stages of brain recovery and when you were going through your recovery process, did you think that you'd ever find yourself in the position where you were able to run a marathon around Ibiza? Certainly not. I couldn't even think about running a marathon anywhere, you know. Even, certainly in early recovery, the first four months of my recovery, I couldn't even walk to the shop alone, which is sort of 200 metres away from my house. That was due to sort of confusion, um, uh, sort of sp speech, uh, hearing sight problems you know my main senses wasn't all there it's a big challenge i'm only one man on the back end of brain recovery trying to help others i'm not going to be able to do it alone i'm going to need support off other people i've needed support right throughout my recovery um and i'm going to need support again to help other people in their recoveries so you know let's um hopefully you know get plenty of people behind me and um spare me on and um you know donate a couple of quid if they don't mind <laughs> <laughs> We've checked in, all sorted. Thanks to Rico. Sort of <laughs> Mr. Organ <laughs> Mr. Organised. He's got us all sorted, He's got us in check. So, uh, sorry. All sorted, and we've checked in. So, we go through now and um, ready to fly. Get a, get a coffee to wake us all up. See my beef there. Yes. <laughs> There's Ricardo, Ricardo Seaton, and he's a, one of my best friends, you know, he's been with me right throughout my recovery. He's going to be organising uh, before we go, you know, hotels and flights, this, that and the other. He's going to be having that in control and also supporting. So he's going to be on bike. Um, Ricardo's going to have my back and he's going to be a great part for me and um, he knows my injury, so he'll be really important. Then we've got Ollie. And he's going to be coming along, he's a great cat, great guy, very clever kid and he's going to be obviously, I'm going to need that treatment and guidance through injury you know, and, and massages and things. And then last but not least we have Tony who is sponsoring from Al Porto. Tony's a great guy, he's um, going to be the support driver, he's not much of a talker, you know he's quite quiet so you might not get him um, speaking much on camera. But his job is going to be really, you know, uh, integral to, to the challenge. He's going to be taking us in the morning to, to where we're going to be setting off, and then he's going to be working through going to the point to point, you know, for support with water, fuel. Um, he's going to have all the medical equipment on board, um, support uh, bits and bobs, and they are going to be the A team that's going to make this challenge happen and take us through to be able to pass on this positive message to other people. This one is the biggest, yeah. biggest challenge of my life, really. Yes. Apart from brain recovery, mm -hmm. but after going through brain recovery, I'm, I'll take anything on because nothing's going to be as hard as that challenge. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's given me um, the confidence. Once I've been through that and I'm sort of got to a place now where I can 
continue with life, you mm -hmm. know, and rebuild my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm willing and I'm ready to take these challenges on mm -hmm. to help other people that are going mm -hmm. through um, that, that dark time, that hard time, you know, so this is what this challenge is all about, is helping mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. you know, helping others um, mm -hmm. get through. And not only the patient, mm -hmm. but there are families and their friends give everyone, yeah, mm -hmm. give everyone sort of hope mm -hmm. and uh, inspiration mm -hmm. that things can and will get better. Going through the route now with Johnny um, and James and the pretty much know the area like the back of the hand, so they're going through every every type of path route we're gonna do. It's gonna be a bit off-road, it's gonna be sticking to some tarmac, which is gonna be ideal. Um, no real concerns, the only real concerns we need to look at is just safety for, for Paul. Um, we don't want to put him under any added pressure that he's already under with regards to any pebbles or any large stones that potentially could cause an injury. That is the biggest risk we need to kind of take out of things. And just be careful, be very sensible. But yeah, looking amazing. They've just verified how, how beautiful the scenery is going to be. And the views are going to be amazing by the sounds of it. So hopefully uh, it's coming together and all the last bits are looking very nice. Hi, I'm James. This is Johnny. We're, we're, doing, uh, we're guiding Paul on his um, Ibiza challenge, four marathons in four days. Tomorrow morning we've got an early start, half past five, just around the corner from where we are now, leading um, Paul up to the north coast, north, kind of northeast, and then the following day we're going to be doing the northwest coast down to San Antonio, and then Johnny's... Yeah, then I step in for the marathon three, which is probably going to start getting more challenging for Paul. I wouldn't say I've sort of given him an easy route. You know, it's a beautiful route, what we're doing on route three, so we follow from San Antonio, just on the outskirts, all down the southwest coast, past the famous sort of Esvedra, to a place called Escabels. Then day four, when I'm sure legs will be feeling super tired. We start him off at the Satellia, which is the highest point on the island, and a nice gentle slope down from the highest point, and then work his way across the southwest coast, further round, following that round to eventually end up in Ibiza town and end up in the castle of Ibiza town. I mean, I'm, so I'm a running coach and I know so I follow athletes quite a lot and I don't know anyone. I don't know all of the guys I know. I know a lot of guys who run a lot of marathons. I don't know anyone that's done, well, I don't know anyone that's done two in two days, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, outside of people like Eddie Izzard and yeah. stuff like that, I think mean, that's the last that's person what, and all these average. ultra marathon runners that me and yeah. James have read about and things yeah. like that, but not, not just somebody who's not used to doing lots of marathons and somebody I don't think Paul is so no, somebody who's recovering re from a serious injury I think, yeah I think it's very inspiring I and, think it's amazing you know for, for, for him in recovery and inspiring other people to, people to also come out feeling good after recovering from something like what Paul's been through I think that's that's a really powerful message Ready for tomorrow, all fueled up. I'm just about to hit the sack and show the team out now as well. I think we're all ready for lunch. Ready. I think we're all um, prepped and ready Indeed. to go. All good to go. We're all a bit nervous, all a bit nervous for the challenge, but you know, we're all going to stick together, support each other. We know what's ahead, we know it's going to be tough, but we're going to get round, you know, and uh, I've got every faith in these guys, you know, everyone's going to pull out the bag and um, let us get, get going. Can't wait. Day one, stretching off, I'm ready to go, I'm really excited. Obviously with James here, and I'm running it with me, and it's kindly done the route, so you know it's gonna be wicked to yeah. see the see the route that is um, planned for us. Hopefully it won't be too hard. <laughs>
Just trying to get mentally prepared for it at these hills. We've heard that they're quite, there's quite a few inclines, so it's going to be interesting for us now. So the sun's coming off. Um, what's going through my mind is making sure that we um, we'll get a good chunk out of it out the way before that heat hits, because once it gets to 11 o'clock and you're talking six o'clock now, you're looking into danger, dehydration. So yeah. We need to know to make sure we're getting scheduled, so yeah, nervous. <laughs> Bara for one. Very, very tough, a lot of mountains, a lot of going around coastlines, a lot of sand, there's literally hit every terrain, there's sand, there's rocks, there's pebbles, literally everything, but it's perfect. Giving us a good challenge, making it harder, making it even better, making us want to do it even more. I was uh, I was really worried about this challenge at first, and um, everyone was like saying, oh, are you worried about it? And I was like, yeah, okay, but to be honest, it's, it's, it is exactly what, what I thought. It's absolutely pain out there. So it's up, down, rocky, edge of cliffs, inland, outlands. So we just need to keep moving. We've got another hour and a half before it hits its peak of heat, so we've got 11 miles to go. 6 to go. Yeah. Certainly feeling it. challenges I've ever done so in my life. Tough. I'm not even joking. Honestly. The route was like that phenomenal was but too hard the terrain mind. was just it was too hard. Like at this level. I battled through recovery and I battled to be here now. And and, and, and the breathtaking views that I've um, embraced today and seen are all just 
only through pushing my boundaries all the time and never giving up and being strong, a strong spirit and being determined, you know. And that's what you've got to do. And uh, don't despair. You know, it's easy for me to say that. I have this. I didn't, I didn't despair. Not don't despair, but don't get sunk by your despair. You know, um, just work through it in a positive manner. Whatever you need to do, get your support. That's the main one. Get support, talk, communication, and you can go on. You know, you can get out of that hole. I was literally put in a hole, and I was, and I've been digging out of it for the last two years. And the message is just to don't give up, never give up, you know, love yourself and, and, and learn to love yourself again if you're going through recovery, don't value yourself any less, just positive steps all the time and enjoy what you can and uh, whoever you are, wherever you are, just be go easy on yourself and there will be a bright future for you I'm sure. Here we go, day two. We're just doing Kalaraka. Kalaraka. Kalak Kalaraka. <laughs> and we're setting off. We're going to be going to San Antonio Bay. So, you know, we're feeling it a bit today. We're a bit fatigued, tired, and, you know, after Marathon 1. But we're ready for it, aren't we, mate? Yeah, we are. We're strapped up, recovered, and That's ready it. for day two. I'm going to enjoy it again and um, go for it. It's going to be tough, but it's not impossible. And that's what we're going to show. We'll support each other and get through it. And that's what I'm doing it for. Yep. You can get there, guys. Nothing's impossible. Just keep going the best you can. Ticking over. You can achieve what a man believes the body achieves. One step at a time, eh? That's it. That's how you get up a mountain. One step at a time. Small steps. Small steps. So we seem to be about mile 16 to 17, um, hitting some, it's getting to the point now where some of these incline and these hills that are unbelievable. It's strain it's going to be putting on all the posterior parts, especially his calves and his hamstrings, his lower back is phenomenal. So this is the reason why we've just stopped off at a checkpoint, a bit of stretching, keeping warmed up. He's had a quick drink, 
Um, I'm just going to hit it again, but these, some of these hills are unbelievable. I'm thinking about my boy. Yeah, you're doing this, mate. He's thinking about Reese. He's doing his GCSEs at the minute. And uh, I've said to him, you know what I'm doing and you know why I'm doing it. And it's going to take everything I've got to do it, literally. So I said, if you put all your effort in this week to your exams, three exams you've got, and I'll think of you, and you'll think of me, and we'll think of each other and, and, and give it our all. When his fatigue hits, he, he, his, um, his, his thought process slows down a lot as well. So he's, he's really having to focus on, on the job in hand, so any slight distraction is hard for him now. Marathon two, done. <laughs> Whoa, tough, really, like, oh, pushed my boundaries completely Got to a whole new level. Uh, thanks to James, you know, talking me around, encouraging me, showing me the route in general. And it was a tough route, <laughs> but what an experience and what an adventure, you know. I came here to see the island, you know, it's beauty, that's exactly what James has done for us. Right, we just need to get straight into the sea. Get a bit of recovery in, reduce any inflammation that, that's going through his joints, his muscles, everything that's flying around, we need to get it reduced as much as we can. Best thing is immediately get straight in there, then eat. We've been there for what, 10 minutes? Uh, 10 minutes in there, or even if we go longer, we will. Right, so um, what we're doing here now, we've just met up with Johnny Lee, and um, Johnny Lee's going to be taking the, um, this, the last two marathons of, of this four marathon challenge. We're coming into marathon three tomorrow. It's pretty impressive to when you look at the map that we've already covered by the looks of it and scaled three quarters of the island already. So it's going to be interesting to see how intense this quarter is going to be because there must be some really, really hard challenges ahead of Paul. So again, it's going to be very interesting to see. So stay tuned, guys. Day three. <laughs> Just getting um, some blister plasters on. It's obviously starting to get fatigued on my feet and it's like picking up some blisters, so they're hurting. Um, it's always just sorting down for me. Here we go then. Getting ready for marathon three. This is unknown territory for me at the minute. I've never done more than two, so you know, I'm a little bit worried. Um, but I'm going to get through it with the help of the team. Get there. 
So I go in this way, not that way. You can do the same. Never stop. So here we are, we're at Espedre, magical rock. Obviously if you don't know Espedre, it's a really spiritual place in Ibiza. I'm just thinking about that, you know, I've often thought in my recovery, I might be, you know, brain damaged and I might be struggling mentally, but my spirit wasn't broken, my soul. And that's where my strength comes from and that's where all our strength comes from in here. You know, so if you are struggling mentally, don't value yourself any less, you know. I'm still strong here, in here and that's what matters. Just to give you the uh, what it feels like when you're running a marathon and that challenge of what you personally set yourself up for. Um, yes, it's about running, but it's all about it, it, it ends up being quite a mental challenge as much as a physical one as well, and you can adapt that challenge to lots of different other areas of your of your life <clears throat> once you've completed a marathon so you sort of overcome those sort of mental barriers and and I think that's something you can use in lots of other avenues of your life we're all we're all up against it at times Bex, and I think yeah choosing choosing to do a marathon is is complementary to that and, and really uh, makes a difference and yeah I'd recommend it to anybody So this is a re really amazing uh, moment. I'm actually back on the beach. This is Bora Bora Beach in Playden Bossa in Ibiza. And it was last year when I actually had the original idea of doing the challenge in Ibiza. And at the time, to be honest, it was only a dream. And um, what had happened was I'd, I'd come along with some friends and they was all drinking, as you do. And uh, obviously I can't get involved in that as much nowadays, you know, I can have a couple of pants, but it, it sends me a lot slower than um, what I used to. Um, so I still come along with the lads, you know, and I still have enjoyed things. And they was all getting drunk in the day and I thought I'll go for a run down Bora Bora. So I went right to one end, right over there, right to the far end, and I ran right all the way back, right to over there. I sort of thought to myself, wouldn't it be amazing to run round the full island? And uh, it was just a dream, you know. You know, I didn't actually think I would actually do it because I, I didn't have no confidence then and I'd not even run a marathon at that point. Well then obviously, unbeknown to myself, I went on to do the marathon challenge, start the marathon challenge in October. And then as the marathon challenge was building up, I sort of thought back about this moment on this beach and thought, well, you know that boat that you had, why not go for it? You know, and, 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 I did, and obviously I'm here again now, um, and I'm, I'm here doing it. <laughs> oh, it's um, just amazing, you know, and um, one of the things about Ibiza is, and that particular story is, is that I am different to how I was, but it doesn't mean to say I have to, I have to miss out on Ibiza, you know, I'm doing it, you know, I'm not just doing the things that the lads do in, on the pop for four days. I'm here doing something different. So I, I might be different, but I can still enjoy life. 
and I can still enjoy the magic of Ibiza just in a different way you know and that's the message don't you know don't think that you have to miss out on things you can still do them but maybe find different ways and I'm enjoying this way that I'm doing right now you know as much as what I would have done if I'd have been on the pop you never know what's going to be coming up if you just keep plodding away and trying you know I've built up that marathon challenge to be able to do this you know just, just try your best and enjoy what you have got at the time and who knows what you're going to do Okay then, ready for number four, Marathon 4, starting at Satellaya, the highest point in the B Fair, which is pretty amazing. I mean, spectacular views. We can see where we're going to be running. I mean, so we've got to this point, you know, we've all got through safely. I've uh, got a few aches and pains now, which I'm going to wait through today, but that was all part of the challenge. I knew that was going to be there. Um, the main thing is, you know, we're here in one piece and ready to take on number four. Complete the challenge, complete the journey, complete the adventure. <laughs> hey, how are you? a bit conscious about because obviously all last night when we finished the marathon yesterday we were complaining about his right ankle <laughs> I'm feeling that good right now uh, if I focused in on how I was actually feeling I'm probably just facing the tears to be honest <laughs> uh, it's tough mate now it's really really hard my ankles are killing me you might see me sometimes when I'm running and I'm sort of touching flowers or feeling like edges and bits and bobs I almost feel like it gives me energy and sometimes when I was really flagging sort of touch the tree you know that vibe off nature gives me energy Okay, uh, so we've broken down. We were supposed to meet Paul and the team back at this stop. They've missed a chance to get supplies from, from here. They've taken a route all the way around and they're now making their way to DC 10. They're about half an hour away from DC 10 right now. By the time they get there, they will desperately need to be uh, refueled. And uh, we're just, we're not able to get to them at the moment as this van has just simply stopped working. I got the phone call from um, Ricky to say that the vehicle had broke down. Um, so we obviously concerned, you know, so I said, how long will you be? So they said, well, it's probably going to be another hour. So, so I thought it was about 10 miles, you know, um, possibly long, we didn't know. So I looked at the lads, um, Ricardo and Ollie, and said, you're going to be okay. I said, let's just do it, you know, obviously, because I couldn't really stop. Because when I stopped, literally my legs would just seize up. And it, as the days have gone on, getting going again after a break of uh, fuel and water was getting harder and harder. So I said to them, look lads, I can't stop for long, so I've got to keep going. And bless them, they did it, you know. And we only had one bottle of water with us at that time, and a few Haribos. 
and there was four of us. So it was a, that was a challenge, a, a mental challenge for myself, you know, was when you need, when you sort of flag and need that support, it was up against it even more. But with the lads' energy that they'd said, come on, let's just do it as well. Right then, we're all together, we're in this together, we'll go to the end together. That's it mate, come on. Come on, lad. steps. Fine off few yards now. 120 mile mate. Yes! Get in! Oh, hey, well, well, done! Yes! Get in! Ah! Oh, thanks to the lads oh, for mate. support, honestly. Jane and Johnny, Ricardo, hey, obviously. Nice. Amazing effort. We've all got through it together. And the team, wherever they are, they are us. They're around there yeah. somewhere. Honestly, <laughs> God. We've proved we've done it. It was tough, but we got through it. I passed on that message. You can achieve, you can go on and you can do anything you want to do. Just keep you know, enjoying it and making the best of what you've got. And keep building up slowly and things can and do get better. Always believe in yourself. It's great to see Paul achieving that. It's great to see all the team pulling together. Yeah. I'm sure you've got that in your first two I, days. I agree. I mean, it's all, you know, a lot of hard work, but it's all come together really well. It's been a Absolutely. pleasure to be around people that are as inspiring as that and, yeah. and up, for, up for doing those challenges. Yeah.
Honestly, I love the guys and for what they've done for me and the charity. And, um, their hard work, commitment, effort, time, um, everything. I couldn't, I couldn't ask for any more from them lads. The lads, I really couldn't. Obviously gone on, and then now with the Ibiza challenge, and then with the, the team, you know. So I mean, I've gone from sort of, you know, this. If we look there, you know, if you look at the pro, the positive progress, if you sort of go like that, go there, and go here, you know, I mean, brain injury, a brain hemorrhage, almost left for dead, and then a year later. I was brain damaged, but I wasn't going to let it stop me. You know, it was it was tough and difficult, but I was never going to let that injury stop me from achieving and going forward with positive progress. And then obviously here, we've gone on to a beta for marathons four days to pass on a positive message. You know, I mean that just that them three you know pieces is just a brief insight into my recovery what's gone on that's been over a long time three three years three years of, of some serious highs and lows um, you know it's quite hard to put into words really just sat here looking at it now because um, I'm proud of you know what I've achieved Giving the right support and my um, determination, and um, so hoping that what I'm going on to do now can really help others in brain recovery or with any mental health issues. You know, hopefully my story can touch people and give them strength and hope and inspiration. Yeah.